Hey guys, today we will be doing robotics and we will be discussing Daniel Hardenberg parameters. So first of all, we will discuss that how we have to find out the DH parameters and what are the methods involved. So first of all, we will discuss the method that is the first point is we will assign the frames according to the four DH rules. These rules we will be discussing later on in this video itself. Now secondly, we will create the DH parameter table. In this we will create a table in which we will have four parameters that is theta, alpha, r and d. We will be discussing each of these parameters below. And then we have the third point that is we will plug the values from the table into a matrix. That is these will be the values that we will take from the table and we will put them into this matrix. Now lastly we will multiply all the matrices that we will get together in order to find out the final DH parameters. Now we will discuss the four rules. Now, the first rule is that the Z axis Z axis is always taken to be the rotational axis or the revolutional axis. That is suppose we have a cylinder and the axis of rotation or the rotation of the cylinder is in uh, this anti-clockwise direction. Then the axis of rotation will be this Z axis. Always keep in mind that the axis of rotation will always be considered to be the z-axis. Now the second point or the second rule is that the x-axis will always be perpendicular to the z-axis of the previous frame. Now suppose we have two frames and we have drawn the z1 over here, x1 over here and y1 over here. Now <clears throat> in order to draw the frames properly we have to keep this thing in mind that the X axis of the second frame is to be perpendicular to the Z axis of the previous frame. So we can see that X2 is perpendicular to Z1. Now the third rule. Third rule is that we have to <coughs> draw Now the third rule is that we have to keep in mind that the Z axis uh, for now don't look at this frame only look at frame 1 and frame 2 now we have to keep in mind that the <coughs> x2 axis or the x axis must intersect the z axis of the previous frame so if we try to extend x2 we will see that x2 extends in this direction whereas if we extend z1 that is the z axis of the previous frame it extends in this direction so we can see that these two will never intersect as this is coming out of the page and whereas this is uh, lies on the page. Now suppose if I rotate this uh, second frame in <coughs> anti-clockwise direction across the Z2 axis then we will see that X2 that is the X axis of the next frame or the nth frame will intersect the Z1 axis of the previous frame or the n minus 1th frame. That is if we extend Z1 and if we extend X2, we will see that these two will intersect at some point in the plane as they both as both of them lie in the pl plane of the paper. Whereas this part lies outside the plane of the paper or it is perpendicular to the plane of paper. Now the fourth rule is that the Y axis is to be drawn perpendicularly to the X axis as well as to the Y axis as well as to the z axis sorry x axis and the z axis according to the right hand rule now what is the right hand rule let us see that suppose we have x over here and we have z over here and if we have to draw the y axis then we have two options either we can draw uh, y axis on the right hand side or we can draw the y axis on the left hand side so now in order to determine on which side we have to draw the y axis we will see the right hand rule that is we will curl our fingers of the right hand from x to y that is these are the fingers we will curl of the right hand and the direction of the thumb the direction in which our thumb will be pointing will be the z axis so if this is satisfied then the direction in which we curled our fingers that will be the y axis for example we have z over here and x is over here and we have to find out in which direction we will have to draw y suppose we have two directions over uh, we have over here and the other one is over here. So now if we consider this axis that is this part and if we curl our fingers of the right hand 
from x to y then our thumb will be pointing upwards that is in the z direction so this is the criteria which is to be satisfied when you are when you have to find out the y axis now we have discussed all the four rules now we will be discussing what are the four dh parameters that is we have four parameters in uh, <coughs> dh table that is the alpha theta sorry theta alpha r and d sometimes in many books they will be referring r as a also so these are the same thing it won't matter whether you write it as r or a so now let us first of all discuss what is theta now theta is the angle when we rotate z n minus 1 such that x n and x n minus 1 lie in the same direction don't worry i'll be explaining this with the help of a diagram suppose i have two frames suppose i have two frames that is this is frame 1 or the n minus 1 th frame and this is frame 2 or the nth frame now according to the definition we have to rotate z n minus 1 or this z or we can write it as z n minus 1 such that x n this is xn xn lies in the same direction as that of x n minus 1 so here we can see that these two axes that is xn minus 1 and xn lie in the same direction so we need not rotate zn minus 1 in any way now let us consider another example in which we will have to rotate it now let's see that we have this frame and we have the second frame like this so in this we can see that the x n minus 1 that is, is the x n minus 1 axis of the n minus uh, 1th frame in the different direction as that of x2 or the x n that is these two axes lie in that different direction so in order to get them to point in the same direction we will be rotating z n minus 1 or the z axis of the previous frame so if we rotate this z n minus 1 axis anti-clockwise then we will get this frame that is z n minus will be pointing as it is whereas now x n x n minus 1 will be pointing in the direction as that of x n or x2 and similarly the angle by which we will rotate z1 will be called as theta so i'll repeat it again we have to <coughs> rotate z n minus 1 axis that is the z axis of the previous frame such that the x axis of the previous frame and the x axis of the next frame lie in the same direction now we will look at the uh, second parameter that is alpha now in alpha we will be rotating x n uh, x n will be rotated that is we will rotate a uh, frame n minus 1 with respect to x n such that z n and z n minus 1 will lie in the same direction this is the trickiest part in finding the edh parameters uh, i mean to say that this one is the hardest to find because in this you have to keep in mind that you will be rotating the previous frame with respect to the x axis of the next frame that is i'll repeat we will be rotating the previous frame with respect to the x n axis whereas this is the uh, n minus 1 th frame this is the n minus 1 th frame and this is the nth frame so what i'm trying to say is that we will be rotating this frame with respect to x2 so that zn minus 1 that is this this axis is lies in the same direction as that of zn minus 1 so now let us see this with the help of an example suppose we have two frames uh, in which z1 is pointing upwards and we have y1 over here and x1 is over here this is the n minus 1th frame and this is the nth frame and over here we have x2 pointing over here and z2 is pointing over here so now we have to we have to get these uh, two axes that is z2 and z1 in the same direction such uh, by rotating x2 by rotating this frame with respect to x2 so if i rotate this frame that is if i rotate it 90 degrees uh, clockwise with respect to x2 then i will be able to get z1 in the direction of z2 for example if i rotate this then we will get z1 over here and z2 over here so now we can see that these two axes lie in the same direction and we have rotated it by 90 degree clockwise 
so over here our alpha will be minus 90 degree always remember that whenever we rotate clockwise then the angles that we will be taking will be negative and when we, whenever we will be rotating anti clockwise then the angles we will be taking will be positive always keep this notation in mind as we will be using this when we will be solving questions on dh parameters now the second last parameter we have is that r and a now r is the distance between the origins distance between the origins of the two frames which is measured along the x n direction that is suppose we have two frames this is the n minus 1th frame and this is the nth frame and we have to measure this distance between these two frames using the x n x n axis such that x n axis should cross or intersect the origin now as we can see that if we extend x n this will not intersect in any way the origin of the previous frame so here we will have to write that r or a is equal to 0 now similarly let us take another example now suppose i have this frame in which z1 is over here y1 is over here and x1 is over here and we have x2 over here z2 is over here and y2 is here now we have to measure the distance between this point and this point that is the origin of the two frames and suppose this length is given to us this is l now according to what i just said earlier we have to find out this distance by measuring it along the x nth axis that is, this is the nth frame and this is the n minus 1th frame and we have to measure the distance between the origins using the nth x nth axis so here we can see that when we extend x2 or xn it will intersect the origin of the previous frame so we can write that the value of r or a is equal to l so now we will come uh, come to the last parameter that is d here we have here we find the distance between the origins of the frame n minus 1 that is the n minus 1th frame and the nth frame which is measured along the z n minus 1 direction that is it is quite similar to r but there is a slight change for example so for example let us take this one first suppose we have two two frames that is this is z1 over here x1 over here and y1 over here and we have to find the distance between these two points now according to the definition of d we have to find this distance which is measured along z n minus 1 or z1 according to this frame so as we can see that when we extend z1 this will not intersect the origin of the second frame so hence we can write that with the value of d will be 0 now in the second case let us take another example in this uh, we have z1 over here and x2 is over here and z2 is over here now we have to find the distance between these two points such that it is measured along z n minus 1 so if i extend z n minus 1 we will see that it it uh, crosses or it intersects the origin of the next frame hence we can say that the value of d will be equal to l that is this length is the distance between the these two regions and it will be given in the question now we have found found out all of our four parameters now lastly we will take all these values that is the values of theta alpha r and d and we will put them we will put them in the matrix as discussed in the method part that is for example we will be discussing two matrices that is let me change the color first that is we have two matrices first is for a revolute joint sorry don't uh, don't mind my writing and in this we have cos theta over here then we have minus sin theta cos alpha sin theta sin alpha a cos theta and then we have sin theta cos theta cos alpha minus cos theta sin alpha a cos theta zero sin alpha cos alpha d and then lastly in the last row we have zero zero and one now keep in mind that this is for a revolute joint don't worry i will be explaining revolute joint in my other videos and then we have a second matrix which is slightly different from the previous one for example in this one sorry in this one we have the prismatic joint it will be used for prismatic joints and there is only a slight change in the matrix uh, from the one above 
that over here we will just put two zeros instead of a cos theta and a sin theta that is the rest of the matrix will remain same but in the place of a cos theta and a sin theta you will be putting zeros so these are the two matrices that we will be using when we will be solving the questions on dh parameters and we will be doing so in the next video in which we will solve a number of questions using these parameters and we will be discussing all these rules again that is we will be applying them again and we won't be discussing them so this is it in this video see you in the next one